All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Pastor Kyle from Vision Church of Lockhart, and I'm here to bring you some more word. Praise God. I'm getting started a little late tonight. Uh, we are celebrating my daughter's third birthday today. So praise God for that. I'm very proud of her and uh, just very excited for all God has for her. But we're celebrating her birthday with some friends. And uh, so that's why I'm starting a little bit later tonight. But um, if you don't catch this tonight, hopefully you can watch it tomorrow. Uh, but anyways, I think this is really going to bless you. And, you know, I was just spending time with my family and friends today. And um, I think the older that we get, the more we realize how important family is you know, and how important your friends are. And um, I feel like when we're young, we waste a lot of time doing things, going places, spending time with people that don't really love us or care about us and um, aren't really a big part of our life. But I think the older we get, we start to realize that, you know, time on this earth is short and uh, God has a calling on our life. And, you know, um, God is, is calling us to, you know, redeem the time and to walk in wisdom and so we have a little bit of time, so we need to make sure that we spend it wisely. But I think the older we get, we start to appreciate, you know, those who love us more and our family and our friends and, and what really matters in life. And, um, but, you know, I think a, a good way for us to get on track um, as far as making the most of our time, you know, because we don't want to go living our life and then look back and say, well, remember the good old times and the good old days. And um, I believe God wants to create new memories, within our lives and to create, you know, the good old days right now in our life. And so I think there's a good way that we can really uh, live our life in such a way to where we don't look back at, you know, regrets or the good old times, but that we can have, you know, good old times every day. And um, anyways, let me just share this scripture with y'all in Philippians 4 and uh, verse 11. And Paul says here, he says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. See, it took Paul some learning to do that. It didn't just come to him. He had to learn to be content in whatever state that he was in, uh, whether he had much or little. And, uh, you know, I want to go over here to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. And, we, you know, we can say, well, that's good for Paul. He was content in all things. Um, but it's easier said than done to be just content with where you're at and what you have. And, um, but I think Paul really, the, the key to his contentment was found here in Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and 13. And, and Solomon says here, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter after he had searched the earth far and wide for a uh, reason to live, really a uh, purpose to live. And he says here, the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and to keep his commandments. He says, for this is man's all. This is man's all. I think that's a huge statement. To fear God and keep his commands. This is what the wisest man in the world, the conclusion he came to after searching the world, traveling. I mean, he could do whatever he wanted to because um, silver was as, you know, the dust of the earth back in uh, King Solomon's day. So he had so much money in Israel, he could do whatever he wanted to do, whenever he wanted to do it. He could buy out whoever he wanted to buy out, Right. He can get whatever he wanted. But he said, this is, this is man's all to fear God and keep his commandments. And I believe that was Paul's key to contentment, was simply fearing God and keeping his commandments. And um, I think the reason that Paul, whether, you know, Paul's uh, life wasn't defined by how much he had or how much he didn't have, right? Um, Paul's life was not more or less uh, more or less based on what he had because Paul's focus was on the commandments. It was on the scriptures. Paul understood that his whole being, his whole purpose in life, the only reason that Paul had any value to his life was because of God's commandments. It says, fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all. If, if we are not fearing God and keeping God's commandments, and what I mean by keeping his commandments, I'm not talking about living under the law of Moses, um, I'm talking about holding true to the scriptures and, and what the scriptures teach us because Jesus came to reveal um, uh, grace and truth. And so, you know, keeping the scriptures, though, and Paul had that revelation that this is his all. And um, actually over here in Philippians chapter three, verse eight, he said, yet indeed, I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. 
But he didn't cry about suffering the loss of all things. He said, and I count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Hallelujah. So the only thing that mattered to Paul was fellowshipping with Christ. That was it. He didn't care how much he had, how much he didn't have. And it's good to have things, believe me. It is, and God wants us to enjoy our life on this earth. He doesn't want us to, you know, suffer and be in debt in, in that way. Um, but, you know, the, I think the key to that, though, is, is walking in wisdom. Because the Bible says that wisdom adds honor and riches to our life. And uh, what more to become wise than to get in God's word and allow his, his word to make us wise. And that's exactly what, what Paul learned. He had to learn to be content, though. It's not something that you just... You know, you, you get in the scriptures and you keep his word. And that's when you learn that nothing else matters but God's word. Really, nothing gives me value in life other than God's word. If it wasn't for his word and me living by his commands, my life would be absolutely worth, worth nothing. I would be sucking up air for no reason. And I feel like um, too, too many of us, you know, we're forsaking the commandments of all. And if, um, I'm sorry, the, the commandments of God. And if the commandments is man's all, that means that we're nothing. And again, um, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, condemn you or make you feel bad. I'm just trying to get you to understand what is your purpose in life? You know, your purpose in life is not simply to work your job or, you know, just get up early, you know, work your job, make money, um, pay your bills every week. Like, that's not your purpose in life. I understand all of us have to do that. We all have to work. And that's a necessity, but that's not your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is to fear God and keep his commandments. This is your all. If you just simply go to work, pay your bills every, every week, you know, every month, um, you're wasting your life. You're wasting your life. And you know what? Not only that, but you're, you're going to be depressed while you're wasting your life. Because Paul said the key to contentment is, is Christ, fellowshipping with Christ. And, and he learned from King Solomon that contentment means to keep the commandments of God. Because apart from that, we begin to, again, forsake the commandments. And, you know, that's when we start seeking other ways. And we start seeking people and places and things um, to be content in our life. And God is telling us here that your all is to fear him and keep his commandments. In other words, like, People, places, and things, those are good, but that should be a supplement to our life. But too many of us as Christians, we're making that, you know, the sole focus where that's our all is to be happy by hanging out with people and going to Disneyland or going to Six Flags or going to SeaWorld or, you know, doing this and doing that. And we're always busy, 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 but really we're just wasting our lives if we're not fearing God and keeping his commands. This is our all. Amen. So, you know, I hope this is a, a wake up call for you. Those of you who are out there and you're just like, you, you, you're looking at your life and you're like, man, I haven't been putting God's word first in my life. You know, I am seeking other avenues and ways to try to make myself content. And, you know, it'll work for a period of time, but nothing can ever satisfy you, fulfill you like God's word can. It's sweet. It's sweet as honey. And when it goes down in your belly, it gives life to your body. It gives life to your life, you know, and you see things in the correct manner. But um, <clears throat> again, you know, contentment is only possible when the commandments of God, the scriptures of God are, are everything. They mean everything to us. I mean, I just look at my life and I'm just like, you know, without God's word, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a life. I'm being honest with you. Without his word, I really wouldn't have a life. And, um, you know, I want to ask you, can you say that? I'm not trying to compare myself to you, so please don't think that I am. But without God's word, I would not have a life. And I'm asking you, would, can you say that? That without God's word, you would not have a life. And I think that until we come to that point where we can say that, we're not truly putting God's word uh, first and foremost in our life. Because if, if we are putting God's word first, that means that our life is founded on the word of God, on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And when, you, when that foundation is taken away, if you take the word of God away from me, 
My whole life comes crumbling down because that's what my whole life is based upon. Honestly, the way that I raise my kids, the way that I treat my wife and love my wife, the way that I pastor uh, you know, Vision Church of Lockhart, the way that um, I treat my, my family members, the way that I treat everybody I come in contact with, a stranger or somebody I know, um, everything about my life, the way that I you know, handle money, um, it's all founded on God's word. And so if you take God's word away from me, I can't function. I'm lifeless without his word. And I think all of us need to come to that uh, conclusion and need to get to that point to where we're like, without God's word, we're nothing. And I believe that's the point that Jesus is wanting us to get to. Because even in John 15, in the first few verses there, you know, he says, you know, you are the branches, I'm the, I'm the vine. And apart from me, you can do nothing. So Jesus is calling us to abide in him and for his word to abide in us so that we can be something. And I think that's true of everybody today. We all have a desire to be something, don't we? We all have a desire to make our life count for something. And I just pray that our life, when, when you die and you go to be with the Lord, that you know, you know that you know that your life counts for something. And I want to reach out to you right now before it's too late and let you know the only way for your life to actually mean something is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's it. This is your all. That's our all. Amen. And, you know, I feel like too many of us were, um, we're down about life and God didn't call you to be sad and depressed about your life. And if you are, I think we just need to, we need to get our priorities straight. You know, we need to get our priorities straight and, and, you know, life, life really is a result of what you put into it. You get out of life what you put into it. If you want more friends, you know, learn to be friendly, right? I mean, you don't want just any friends. You want the right kind of friends, but learn to be friendly. You know, um, if you're, if you want a better marriage, you know, go to God's word and figure out how can I have a better marriage? How can I love my wife better? How can I treat my husband better? You know, life is what life is what you put into it. And I feel like so many of us, we're, we're frustrated about life and what we're getting out of it. But ask yourself, not what are you getting out of it, but what are you putting into it? And I think that really starts to make us think and, um, and really gets us going somewhere. Because if you're only questioning, like, what am I getting out of life? What am I getting out of life? You know, that's not going to change anything. Your life's not going to change. But when you think, what am I putting into my life? What am I learning? What am I, what are, how am I adding value to my life? And I think, you know, Solomon searched every, you know, every nook and cranny and under every rock and, and he, he tried to find that. How do I add value and purpose to my life so that it means something when I leave? And he said, everything is vanity under the sun, but one thing to fear God and keep his commandments, this is man's all. Amen. So anyways, I just hope that you take this and um, hopefully share it with your friends and, and family and um, not just share it with them, but also think about it for yourself and meditate on this and, and think, you know, what am I doing with my life? And I pray that I don't, I don't want us to get to the end and breathe our last breath and, and be dissatisfied with our life. And I think all of us, you know, all of us make, make mistakes. All of us have regrets and things like that. But God is calling us to break free from those regrets and to be like Paul, who is content because he put God's word first, because he fellowshiped with Christ and that was, that was his main thing. That was really all that he cared about was just his relationship with Jesus, you know? And it takes time to get to that point to where you're, you're satisfied and, and content in your relationship with Jesus. Paul had to learn that. He said, I had to learn to be content. And I think that we need to start learning that same message that Paul learned is to be content with God and fellowshipping with him. And all these other things that are good, but they should be a supplement to our relationship with God. They should not be the foundation of our life. God's word should be the foundation of our life. Amen. I love y'all. God bless y'all. And um, I'll talk to you real soon.